as we're noticing all around the country and all around the world, actually, but, uh, you know, Americans are generally more aware of America. We've got this bomb cyclone, insane winter storm coming, and it looks like the, the super cold is caused by the same kind of climate change that is producing the super hot in the summer and the desertification that's happening around the world and all these other kinds of things. Which means that we are already, you know, at the point where it's not enough to just stop putting carbon into the atmosphere. We have to start figuring out how to pull it out. A technology entrepreneur with a degree in geology from William & Mary, uh, uh, Matthew Sniff, and a digital marketing professional making climate action more accessible to the masses, uh, Natalie Mar Marcutul Marcutulio. Uh, are both on the line with us. They're with an organization, drawdao.org. Uh, draw underscore DAO is the Twitter handle. And uh, Matthew and Natalie, welcome to the program and happy holidays to you both. Yeah, it's great to be on. Thanks for having us, Tom. Yeah, great to have you with us. So if I could start, let me start with you, Natalie. Uh, tell us about drawdao.org. What is the organization? Where did it come from? What are you all trying to do? Yeah, so it was really Matthew's brainchild, but essentially the whole idea is how do we make carbon drawdown, as you mentioned, drawdown, down, as you mentioned, more accessible to the masses. So how can anyone contribute a little bit or be part of these campaigns and fund a wide variety of campaigns to really try to tackle this problem that we have of the amount of carbon that is already in the atmosphere? There are a lot of companies right now focusing just on reducing carbon, and that's great, but we've seen that we need to both reduce and remove to really make an impact. That's that, and and that seems like a, a a noble goal, Matthew. How do you do it? How do we how do we actually so, reduce the carbon rather than just you know stop putting it out there? Yeah, it's a great question, Tom. I mean, a lot of the world thinks that carbon removal is not necessary or potentially even a harmful thing, incentive wise for you know oil corporations and stuff like this. But the reality is is that every IPCC international you know panel on climate change report says that we need to remove carbon from the atmosphere at the scale of over 10 billion tons a year every single year for the next 30 years to come close to our goal of one and a half degrees uh, capped warming by 2050. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this. There's a lot of natural pathways that are not harmful to the environment to do this. Um, you know, kelp can remove carbon from the ocean. Uh, specifically, the project we're working on, though, is rock dust, right? And, and rock dust through a very natural process called the inorganic carbon cycle can actually interact with carbon dioxide in the soil and in the air and, and create basically bicarbonate uh, and calcium carbonate in the soils. And it can sequester carbon for basically forever, for millions of years. And so this is a process that already exists on the earth today. Um, and you know it's something that we would like to explore the efficacy of scaling up um, and is also not, not super expensive, right? So one of the projects that we're working with is called Carbon Gardener, our first project. Um, and we're trying to raise $10,000 to basically explore the efficacy of this pathway with uh, high school partners um, in the Northeast, where we can spread rock dust across high school gardens and measure how much actual carbon dioxide they're sequestering in the soil. So it's like creating limestone, right? Car calcium carbonate, it's uh, combining calcium and carbon? Yeah, it's calcium carbonate. In, in some cases, it's bicarbonate. Um, but in all cases, it's actually removing this carbon for pretty much for good. And at the same time, it's a natural fertilizer, so it can actually improve crop yields. Um, and so the goal is if this works and we can prove that this actually can scale up, uh, it could be something that, you know, farmers at commercial scale spread across their fields in the Midwest um, and could become a possible billion ton pathway to remove uh, a billion tons of carbon every single year, which would get us almost 10% of the way to our goal of uh, removing over 10 billion tons a year of carbon from the atmosphere. That's remarkable. Natalie, tell me about the, 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 this nonprofit, drawdao.org. Um, what, you know, uh, what do you do? How are you funded? Uh, how did this come about? You, you mentioned it was Matthew's idea, how, but uh, if you could fill in the details for us. Yeah, so the main goal was originally, how can we find a way to fund these projects? As Matthew mentioned, they're not expensive projects. It's, you know, if we can fund as many as possible at a smaller rate, then more likely to find success. But the main goal is how can we fund these projects in a new, unique way? And that's where the draw portion comes in. It's all through artwork. So we've actually teamed up with climate artists. And this was, again, sort of our idea thinking about 
you know, there are a lot of nonprofits out there. How can we make sure we're giving donors something they get excited about and help naturally spread the message? Um, so a lot of climate focused artists that we partnered with who've actually created custom artwork for this campaign specifically. And what that allows us to do is one, give every single donor a little thank you. Certain donors will get a physical print, but then also just naturally spread the word and awareness about this cause because the artwork is related to the cause. People will see it, share it and then just naturally learn more about this carbon drawdown process because mm -hmm. there isn't enough awareness about it. Wow, it seems like the art would make great uh, uh, Christmas or birthday or, or for that matter, holiday gifts. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, uh, if, uh, if Matthew, where, where, you said that the, uh, uh, the, the carbon gardening project or, uh, yeah, carbon gardening project is your main one. Um, what are some of the other ways that we can that we can work to to draw down carbon and 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 how do we wake people up? How do we how do we inform people of the need to go beyond just you know replacing light bulbs and and supporting government actions that might uh, you know like put a price on carbon that sort of thing? Yeah, those, those are those are two loaded questions for sure. I, I, you know, a lot of natural ways, like I said, you know, kelp, rock dust is mineralization. There's trees, right? Everybody knows trees remove carbon, but it's not. 100% permanent forever. Usually trees only last about 100 years at, at, at the longest, right? So, um, you know, there's 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 technology ways too, like direct air capture. Uh, there are actual plants out there now that look like giant arrays of washing machines in the sky that actually remove carbon, but um, they're not as efficient in these natural pathways, right? So I think part of segueing into your, your second question there, Tom, part of what we need to do is, is, is educate, right, everybody. Like, I think if the average person actually knew um, what it would take to remove carbon from the atmosphere and get us on a path to actually capping warming at one and a half degrees, they would they would be a bit more, uh, let's say there would be more urgency, right? Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, that's, that's the thing that we're fighting against is the average person that we've spoken to with the launch of drawdown.org uh, knows that climate change is actually a problem. I think we've crossed that hurdle at this point in time in 2020, almost 2023. I think the average person does admit climate change is a real issue. But the average person also thinks that climate change is easily solved. And I think the reality is that we have to get out there in a practical and, and optimistic way is that we, we can fight climate change through things like this, through this carbon garden or rock project. But it's going to take a lot more of these projects, right? The issue is a supply problem. We have a lot of demand from corporations for net zero, uh, you know, getting to net zero. But there's not nearly the supply of carbon credits that we need to actually get all of these corporations to net zero, right? It's not going to be just reducing emissions, which although is the first thing you should do, um, it's not the only thing that you should do. We need to be removing this carbon at scale, 10 billion tons a year. Right. So, so Natalie, are, are there government, um, I, I, it sounds from what Matthew just said that at the very least, you know, government should be involved in, in uh, particularly at the corporate level in encouraging this sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to start with us, we're focused on sort of community led projects. Mm -hmm. We have had some. So, for example, our last project had previously worked with the university, you know, obviously getting the government involved once we've scaled them out. But I think it's really important to start, you know, what can we do on a small scale improve before maybe necessary approaching larger entities, entities or the government. And that's what we're really trying to focus on is what can the average person or the local scientist? We have plenty of scientists already working on this who just don't have funding. And maybe that's where the government comes in, but do think it's really important first to prove it out and get some testing before immediately just saying, let's have the government solve this. We're talking with uh, Natalie Marcatulio and Matthew Sniff, who are uh, the, you know, with drawdao.org. Draw, uh, Natalie, where did D, what is DAO? Draw, I get draw as in drawdown, uh, DAO? Yeah, so this actually was originally um, a crypto project. So the idea was to do NFTs and that would be the artwork that we would distribute out. Uh -huh. Obviously the market has shifted a little bit. That is where the original idea for the artwork came from, but we still saw it as community led. We wanted all the information to be open source. We wanted it to be something that every person would be part of, which is why we still identify with the DAO mission of again, being something that's kind of grassroots community, all open source. So everything that we learn from our projects will be published to both anyone who donates and also just to the science. science so you're activity. saying it's, it's Tao as in, as in the, you know, the, the philosophy that is typically associated with Buddhism? Originally with Buddhism and the crypto world, mm -hmm. uh, 
So yes, the idea of just open the way scores. Of the Dow. Yeah. yeah, fascinating, fascinating. But Matthew, what, and we're we're gonna hit a break here. We're gonna have to wrap it up. But Matthew, what can can you know average people do if they go to drawdao.org or are there drawdao.org? Are they going to find suggestions about how they could even turn their garden into a carbon capture system? Yeah, that's a great question, Tom. So if you go to drawdao.org, the the, the best thing to do is or maybe the main thing to do is uh, is is click on the carbon gardener campaign it's the one it's the only one that's actually currently running for us um, and as Natalie mentioned like you can basically donate any amount will give you free art um, really great art from uh, artists from frontline communities who are are more adversely affected by climate change and did less to cause the problem there's some fantastic art here these are TEDx climate artists from last year who we've partnered with over six different artists from across the globe. And if you donate $150, you actually get shipped a physical print uh, of some really cool artwork that can start a conversation, right? And I think that's part of what we're trying to accomplish is start more conversations um, about carbon removal. And, and the Rock Dust Project specifically will help fund um, different projects in the Northeast to, to measure how much carbon can be removed from high school gardens. Remarkable. Matthew and Natalie, uh you're doing God's work. Thank you so much for dropping by today and sharing your story with us. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, and, and happy holidays to you both. DrawDAO.org is the website. Draw underscore DAO on Twitter.